Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this old barn in the fall. This is painted from one of my photos I took of back home in Golden British Columbia, Canada. This is an 11 by 14 canvas that I pre-painted just with a little bit of black and white to make gray. We're using a number 30 filbert to start and we've got neon red. I've got a little bit of light blue violet, some yellow ochre, and some titanium white. I'll have a full list of all the colors and brushes below the video and the description of this video as well. So I'm just gonna start taking a little bit of blue with my filbert brush. I wanna have a little bit of water just to help pull that paint out and spread it across the canvas easily. So just long brush strokes back and forth, side to side, occasionally going back for a little bit more paint and water. I'm now gonna start picking up a little bit of white and adding blue to it so I can create some lighter tones and shades and just creating a little bit of uh, movement, some soft sweeping clouds, so different brush strokes now. Instead of long sweeping brush strokes, I'm gonna do some shorter ones and not make them straight across, just pulling them up slightly on either side. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that light blue with the white across the bottom of the canvas as well. Now I'm gonna pull a quarter of the way up a few lines across leaving uh, some of that darker blue showing so I've got some lighter highlighted areas and some cooler shadows. I'll then pick up yellow ochre, white, and my red not completely mixing it to make one color, but having a few of those colors in my brush come out in different tones and different amounts, just organically and naturally right onto the canvas. So how, so however you wanna add it, you can. You can use a little bit more red or a little bit more yellow ochre if you want. I'm constantly changing it up. You can't uh, go wrong with this. Any amount will be pretty. Even more will be uh, really, really nice and vibrant for a fall. Uh, painting. So these colors are really really pretty and complementary to this light blue violet and this just makes for a really cozy autumn scene. So I'm going to just keep adding a little bit more here and there, not completely covering up the bottom of course because you need those shadows in there for the light and shadow to work. Um, so it's just a quarter of the way up and that will be where we start to add our trees but I'm also going to add just a little hint and touch of these colors up in the sweeping clouds in the sky. Okay, once done, I'm gonna wash that brush out and switch over to my one inch oval mop brush. This is by Princeton. It's a great brush, you can find them online and at Michael's. My brush is not wet. I'm going straight with a dry brush directly into my paint, tapping to load the bottom of it to make it stay puffy. So you wanna tap into your paint to keep that nice puffy, poofy shape so we can create some nice, soft, stipply types of bushes and trees. So turning my brush, straight up and down like this i can have more control when painting narrower and taller trees and then i'm going to turn it the other way and very gently pull and flick and sweep up for the indication of some trees in the distance some um, tree trunks and just so that we get a variation of different heights types of trees picking up a little bit of white here and there to create softer tones and highlights and different shades of the yellow ochre and the neon red. All of these colors together will get some really pretty peachy soft uh, fall tones. So then you can turn your brush in different ways. You can use just one part of it and create some shorter little rounder types of bushes and trees as well. And I'm just gonna pull and sweep some more of that color out down here in the foreground. I'm going to show you guys another quick little tip here rather than switching over to a narrow burr brush I grasp the brush like this and sort of pinch it gently to make it narrower and then I can go in here carefully and add a highlight to one side of the trees where I want 
and overall just have more control over how I use the brush. Um, if you don't have one of these oval mop brushes, you can use a fan brush and you can also use uh, a little flat brush or a round brush. It's just in how you use the brush that will create the stipple effect, but it, it is nice if you can get a mop brush or an oval mop brush like this. Um, they just make really soft, natural looking bushes and trees and they're a lot more enjoyable to paint. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the red this time with my white and yellow ochre so it's more of a pinky tone and you can see how pretty these colors all look together, just all soft pastel tones. Um, and if you're not sure about um, different shades of paints that you can use in case you don't have the ones I'm using today, just uh, leave a question or comment below and I'll give you some alternatives for colors and brushes as well. I've washed out my oval mop and I've got a liner brush now. I'm getting it wet first and I'm then going to take all three blue, red and yellow to create kind of a brown darker tone. Just something darker instead of pouring out another color at this point I don't need to. I'm just going to make uh, this color by mixing these all together just with a little bit of water like I said and I'm going to pull and flick uh, and create little lines and branches just for those tree trunks and and all those trees in the distance so you just want to have a few you don't need to have um, branches and tree trunks on every single tree that you know that's not going to be natural looking we're not going to see all of them like that some of them have trees in front of them and we're just going to see the foliage only and no tree trunk so keep that in mind just kind of make it random have one here or there and then add a little highlight of white here and there as well so you have some highlights and shadows but very subtly because this is in the distance it's far away and it's going to be softer in tone we're going to save our brightest highlights and shadows and contrast for our barn and the little wire um, fence in the foreground. Okay, so now I'm going to take those colors again with a bit of water and using the same brush and I'm going to create a low fence in the distance as well that um, sits in front of those trees. So we're just going to simply place little tiny lines about half an inch or an inch apart. Doesn't really matter if you have yours closer or farther away spaced out than mine. It's really old and it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be kind of lopsided and crooked. So you really don't have to worry about making perfectly straight lines for this. It's just going to add more character if you have them leaning a little bit more and crooked in areas. And the same goes for the barn. It's been there. I actually don't know how old it is but it's pretty old and it's kind of sloping and like I said just really old and I think that just helps to add a lot of character to this painting and it's why the area <clears throat> where it is is so um, enjoyed and popular everybody goes there to visit and go horseback riding there and there's a pond and it's a really pretty place and when I go back to visit I'm going to be taking some video so I can show you guys and we'll do a winter time uh, scene of it um, in the next uh, few months so stay tuned for that and make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you want to see it earlier and the longer version then sign up for patreon I've got some phthalo blue now so I'm going to use this in combination with a neon red to create a nice deep dark color for the darkest shadows and contrast of the barn. I'm also going to use this for any other dark areas in the foreground that I need to show up a little bit more. And I mix it in with a little bit of my white pastel color to create a softer tone first and just slightly go over this. Now the paint is wet so I know it's not going to look too dark because it's going to pick up those lighter colors every time I go over it. But this is just going to make it stand out a little bit more and create a slight shadow at the base. So just a little bit here and there on this fence and then we'll get started on the next step.
Okay, for the next step in this painting, we're going to be using a number six filbert brush. Of course, you can use a smaller or larger one if you like. I'm just going to get a bit of my lightest colors here, so more white than the yellow and the red. And I'm just going to very softly scumble and give it a hazy look in the background and the distance behind these trees. So keep in mind, the trees are dry now, otherwise it would just be all kind of blended and we would lose that foliage look. So you wanna make sure that you're applying this over dry, dry paint. You wanna go just a little bit on the top of those and then above them into the sky. So you just, it helps to create the atmosphere in this painting that makes it look really soft and cozy and inviting. So I'm using just a little bit here, you can see, of the light pinky color I made with the neon red and the white. And I'm also using a little bit of yellow ochre at times. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm coming in and tapping in a little bit more foliage after as well to give a little hint of some taller trees and just really giving this a layered forest look. For the next step of this painting, we're going to be using a flat brush. This is a number four, but you can use smaller or larger. I'm going to be using this brush to create the lines needed for this old barn. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be taking the red and the blue to create a nice dark purpley, almost it's kind of between purple and brown, depending on which red you're going to use and which blue you use. But this is just the right color, but you could use um, other colors if you want and I'm just going to do a little slanted line off the edge of the canvas pull straight across and then start coming down here on the uh, left side of the roof now it is on a slant and it's going to be slightly crooked because it is very old and kind of dilapidated but I like those old barns that look like this I think that they tell a story and they have so much character to create the indication of the logs, I'm just going to slide my brush side to side, pulling and leaving a little bit of space in between. I'll alternate with a little bit more red at times and a little bit more blue at times. I will be coming in and adding a little bit of a highlight with a yellow ochre, red and white after. Just to make it look like those um, logs stand out and they're round and you can see a highlight on them. So there's little notches on the corner where the logs join, right? So that's what I'm adding there, uh, just right under the roof line on the left side. I'll add a few little dabs of just really dark, uh, my dark color, which is mostly blue with a little bit of red. Okay, let's head over to the other side of the roof and start coming in. Now this has got a really different uh, angle to it so you want to just do these little lines follow along a little diagonal then a bit straight down and then diagonal again that comes a bit farther and then it pulls over and meets the other side of the barn and then again these lines I'm adding here the front of the barn are slightly on a slant so they're not straight across so kind of just line your brush up and instead of going straight across to meet the other side you're going to slant it just a little bit and then i'm going to come in here and start adding some lines that go down and then a few diagonally we're going to go over this area quite a bit so don't worry if you don't get these lines exactly they're not going to stay as is they're going to change a little bit i'm just getting a feel for blocking in color lines and shadows at this point Using again the blue and the red. I'm going to fill in that area a little bit, add underneath the roof line here, and then I'm going to use the corner of my brush and dot 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 or dab for the ends of the logs and where they notch together. Okay, using the same colors, I'm going to come in and add a tiny little dab here and another little line on the top and on the side, one thicker than the other for the door or the doorway, and then a few little um, 
rectangles or squares for the windows. And again, they're not perfect. They're kind of broken and slanted and misshaped. So you don't have to worry about anything being square and perfectly measured out. Then I'm going to add a highlight using um, the light blue violet. You can also add a little bit of white if you like. I'm going to go into a little bit of blue, red, yellow ochre now. And I'm going to start working on the roof. So it's an old, very old tin roof and it's got some rust in it. And in fact, the light blue sky color that we have is the perfect underpainting for this roof because it has a lot of that, that light blue violet color to it. And I've got a pretty dry brush you can see here because as I apply the paint lightly, you can see little patches of that light blue underpainting showing and that's perfect. It's really making this effortless and giving us that effect that we need of a rusty old tin roof. So you can add a little bit more at times or a little less. You can play up a little bit on more on the red and the yellow ochre side if you want to add more saturation and color and a rust-like appearance to your barn. So where the tin is and how the tin is on the roof, it's not in one um, single piece. They're in like little rectangle patches and pieces. So I'm coming in with a little bit of a darker shade in my brush, but not as dark as the front of the barn is. And I'm adding lines, kind of like a messy, uh, imperfect grid. So just go across and then add lines on a slant and just create this as best you can. If it's not the same as mine, if it's a little bit straighter or a little bit more slanted, it's still gonna look just fine. And if you guys are having any trouble with this at all, um, you can sketch it out first and you can paint over it. So approach this uh, the easiest way that it is possible for you. And if you need any more help, don't hesitate to ask. I'm gonna go over now inside carefully with a little bit of a dry scumble of white, maybe tint it with a little bit more yellow and red here and there to finish off uh, this roof and the bright highlights. Okay, I'm going to add some highlights to the door and the windows now. Just a little bit of the same colors, a little bit of white. Tint it with either yellow ochre uh, or red or both. So as long as it's a nice warm color for the highlight and we've got that other cool blue violet as a shadow, um, you can't go wrong. The two colors are going to work really well together and of course we're going to keep our darkest darkest shadows and contrast on the inside of the barn so with the same light colors that I use for the windows and the door I'm going to pull across in between those lines for the highlights on the logs I'm now going to take a little bit of phthalo blue a little bit of white and some light blue violet. I'm going to mix all color, all these colors together to make a really vivid, cool shadow on the barn. This is going to look 
quite striking and play off on the peachy tones and the red and the darker contrast that we have. So you can see it stands out more than the sky. It's got that phthalo blue in there, so the saturation's a little bit more intense. So I'm gonna go inside that roof line on the left, and then I'm gonna add some of this shadow color to the beams and the boards on the front. And then pull again, following that slant of those logs on the front of the barn and just adding lines in here for part of the logs. Okay, I'm gonna use the same color to add little bits of shadows and enhance the foreground and all around the base of the barn. So it's gonna be like a skinny uh, triangle. If you wanna break it down into shapes, it makes it easier. So on the left side of the base of the barn, I've pulled out making it wider from the barn and then it gets skinny and narrow like a skinny long triangle. I'll come in and add a little bit of this color to the tin roof as well, where I applied those lines and just a little bit over uh, the bottom of the roof line above the windows. For the next step of this painting, I'm going to tidy up the edges and make them stand out a little bit more by adding my dark contrast color, the red and the blue, and I'm just going to fine tune and detail and outline the roof line on either side. After outlining the roof line, I'm going to add little lines inside the left part of the roof line here. So just straight across. If you make yours a little bit on an angle, that's okay too. So just really simple, few little lines straight across. And then I'm going to come in and add a little bit more contrast and shadow colors in between these boards. I'll outline and just add a little bit more highlight and shadow under and between the logs, as well as those boards and beams on the front of the barn. Um, so at this stage, you could just leave it as is, or you can uh, make your barn and your logs stand out a little bit more just by taking the extra time to do this. And what I wanna do is go back and add a little bit more light and a bit of uh, highlight right behind the barn, right in here. So I'm carefully gonna take my light colors the white and the yellow ochre a little bit of that red in there and just make it nice and bright this will make our structure which is our barn stand out even more and look more 3d so I'm just going to do this really carefully it's best to do this um, when those lines we added on the barn are, are all dry but if they're not then you'll just need to work a little bit longer at it and apply more paint I'll then soften that off after but as that's uh, drying a little bit more, I'm gonna come over and apply a little bit more of a highlight on the roof here. Now this has got a little bit more of the neon red, creating a frosty, soft pink tone to it. So I just kind of wanted to really bring and incorporate all these colors together so that everything flows nicely and uh, comes across as soft and all those pastels uh, kind of just go all over the canvas. So you pick them up in the front here on the side of the barn in the foreground. Then there's a little bit back here and in the trees as well. Okay, 
after adding those soft warm highlights i'm going to go in and alternate with a little bit more of my blue violet so i'll work a little bit more on adding some shadows here in the foreground The next color I'm going to make is I'm going to add my pink I made with the neon red and white and I'm also going to take a little bit of my light blue violet a little bit of phthalo blue and I'm just going to make a smoky purple lilac -y color so here's a, a nice shade that you can learn to make by color mixing using this palette and a hint of this here and there is going to look really really pretty in this painting uh, like I said all these colors work together really well it's all the same palette and you can make so many different tones and shades just by using these colors that we have here today add a little bit in between some of these boards and beams here and then I'm going to be taking a little bit of white and creating just a lighter shade of that lilac -y purple and blue and I'll add a tiny bit of that to the foreground so we've got another shadow color and have it just kind of pull into where it gets a little bit darker and deeper and more enhanced towards the barn. Now before we begin our little wire fence in the foreground, I'm just going to take my liner brush and get a really light yellow ochre color by taking yellow ochre white and no water on my brush. I'm going to go carefully cut in and around where the front side of the or the corner side of the barn is where we have those logs and just carefully outline that and then play up on my highlights a little bit more I'm going to give it a fresh coat of highlight right there above the shadow and then we're going to be working on the very foreground bottom part of this painting and canvas uh, I'll be adding a few more highlights here just before we start that but you want to make sure that you wash your brush out and we're going to get that nice dark color again by taking a bit of water a little bit of red and blue and we're going to make this really crooked it's just an old wire fence like a barbed wire fence again they had uh, horses they wanted to keep in this area and they wanted uh, to keep bears out and anything else so we've got this old barbed wire fence you want to kind of have your brush dry in some areas just so that it looks a little bit thicker and thinner in some areas and just kind of a patchy look. And then I'm just adding little dabs, messy little dabs here for where it's uh, the pokey barbed wire areas. All right, while that barbed wire fence layer is drying, I'm going to head over back over to the barn now and cut in and add my final shadows on either side of these boards. And then I'm going to come around in between, add a little bit more shadow color and on the corner, front corner of where the logs notch together of the barn as well. So you can see I'll just add a little bit of that dark contrast color and it's going to make everything stand out. I'll go right under the roof line as well.
I'm now going to add a nice warm highlight over the barbed wire fence so it's not over the entire area. We're just going to make it kind of patchy. We'll add a few little dots and dabs here on those bar barbed wire knots and then kind of just wiggle around and graze over. You can wrap it around, have a twisted sort of a look. If you watch closely what I'm doing with my brush, I'm kind of twisting and rolling and dragging at the same time. That'll give it that natural twisted look. As we let that layer dry on the barbed wire fence, I'm going to come over to the barn and add our finishing highlights and touches, really making this nice and bright. You've got to remember that as acrylic paint dries, it will look duller and darker, so it can take a few coats um, to add the finishing um, highlights to a painting. So that's what we're doing here. It's kind of just like uh, a really soft and dry um, application so not a lot of paint some areas you want to use maybe just a little bit more pressure and you just really don't want that whole entire roof to look the same um, so after you've done that we're gonna go and add some blue and red to our brush you don't even have to wash your brush out you could pick up a little bit of yellow ochre we're just gonna make a little rectangle right here for a little post it's an old post and it's going to be kind of crooked and slanted don't worry about making it perfectly straight up and down and then we'll just add another rectangle right in the middle so it looks like a really fat block letter t you can add a highlight around it if you want you could outline it with that yellow ochre and white um, you could also, if you wanted to, create a little wood pattern or wood grain inside. I was going to grab my rake fan or rake filbert brush. I guess a rake filbert brush would actually work the best because it's a, a smaller and easier to control. That brush makes excellent wood grain patterns and designs. So if you guys have that brush, you could use that for these. And then there's just a few other little posts right here. Um, different sizes one's going to be slightly taller than the other and I'll use the same colors and the same brush technique so it's not going to be all the same color so as long as you have a few different tones in there and lines that's all you need and I'll just add the finishing touches to this painting outline a few areas and then this painting will be all done. I really, really loved being able to share this one with you guys. This is a special place to me. I have a lot of memories here. It's a lovely, charming place with a lot of uh, history and charm. And I hope you guys enjoy painting this one with me. Stay tuned for my next um, take on this old barn. It'll be a winter-themed one. Yes, we're already at that um, time. We're getting ready for fall right now. So I'm working on some new fall-inspired pieces. And then I'll be um, getting ready to start my winter series and winter-themed paintings. So I hope you guys have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions. Please feel free to leave comments below. Share this video with your friends and your painting groups. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Thanks, everybody.